Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to the Midweek Midday Talk Show with Auntie Tima. I'm so excited to have you all here. If you're here, I see someone or some people are here already on YouTube. Thank you for joining me. Let me know that you are here. Please go to the comments and say hello. Good to see you here, Mrs. Lola, one of the amazing moms at the Girls Hub. So excited to have you here. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you, Instagram. Thank you, Facebook, wherever you're joining from. I want you to know that I see you here. Okay, so Mrs. D of life, Mrs. D. How are you and how are my queens in your house? You already know I'm going to ask, ask about them, right? Yes, they're the ones I actually care about. <laughs> All right, so yes, welcome again. And I'm really excited to be here today because this conversation is going to be really interesting. Okay, um, I see that I can view IG comments as well. So yes, Instagram feel free um okay 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 yes i can see all right thank you team okay so uh, we're talking about you know the sex conversations especially for our girls oh this is giving up okay that's fine better be fine <laughs> We're talking about the sex conversations for our daughters um, because if we don't, it's going to happen anyway. And a lot of times, parents come late to the party. That's what I realized. Hello, Mrs. Blessing. Your, my queen in your house is doing good? Awesome. Please help me take care of her. Yes, I see all the moms, Mrs. B. Billy Kisu, I see you, ma'am. I hope my queen is doing great. Thank you so much. You guys keep taking care of them. That's all you are there for. Thank you. <laughs> you will not lose your reward in the name of Jesus. Your reward will come fully and squarely. Okay, so <clears throat> I was saying that if we don't stand up, like if we are not proactive, if we are not at the forefront, we're going to lose out. We will be the ones that will lose out the most because this sex conversation is going to happen, like I said, anyway, whether you're the one having that conversation or not, it is already happening. The world has, um, uh, has, has been wired to sex educate your child, your daughter, whether you like it or not, whether you are ready or not. So let's start from that note that sex, the sex conversation is already going on. Some of you are not aware, right? You're like, no, 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 I have not started. Oh, but it has started already. So the question is, so who is having the sex conversations? If we are not the ones, then who is? This, this is something, you know, that bothers me a lot because... It is, I would say, the, the, the reason why we are having a lot of um, inappropriateness happening in our world today because there was a gap. We created the gap and we are paying the price for the gap. Is there any reason why girls are naked on the streets? Is there any reason? That's a sex conversation. You know, one thing we need to understand is that the sex conversation is not only about the sex itself, S-E-X. No, that is part of it, but that is not all of it. So everything that has to do with, yes, sexual intercourse itself, um, sexuality, relationships, everything about that sector hmm, is actually you having the sex conversation. So relax. Think and 
I'm here to come and tell you to go and be calling the STX world. No, you will call it though, but that is not all of it. Because sexuality has become so diverse. <clears throat> Excuse me, it has become so diverse. You have people, you you know, and the world is so aware, the world is so knowledgeable about these things. So the world has tweaked it, the world has expanded it. The world has deepened it. And here we are. We can't even call the word S-E-X. Now, I want to I want to start with this question. When did you when would you okay? Who who was the person that you heard anything about sex first from? Please go to the comments on any of the platforms. Let me see you. Oh, I see so many people on Instagram. I see her. Ade Olayo. I see Mother of Billionaires. Hello, ma'am. I see Angel Lange. I see um, Praise. I see Nema. I see, oh, I see so many people. Thank you so much for joining. Please write in the comments. When was the, who was that person? that, you know, somebody said a book, okay? Somebody said my friend, the first person said my friend, okay? My friend, my friend is secondary school. All right, so please let me hear you romance novels. <laughs> I know, right? Me too, come to think about it now. I think it was actually romance novels. <laughs> Who else was it? Was it Neil Sambu's guru like me? Ah, so with Neil Sambu's primary school or not secondary. Okay, someone else said, Television. Okay, please keep it coming. Let's even trace it. Okay, on Instagram, I see classmates in secondary school. Mm, thank you so much, cousin. I see a magazine. All right. So let's. Do, do you see what is going on? Thank you for the answer. You guys are co-teaching with me today. So I've I've not seen anybody say parents, mother, father. I've not seen. So do you see? that whether you are having the sex conversations or not, it's already going on. I love you all. Thank you for being so sincere. Somebody say, neighbors, thank you. Neighbors, they are among. Neighbors, family, friends, were the first people you got the sex conversation from. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, no, we say we read this album like our life depended on it. Trust me. I read it with my with everything that was within me. Ha! Oh, so I'm seeing news and bones. I'm seeing um friends. I'm seeing magazines. Somebody said, I guess it was hints, right? Yes, hints. So very good at hints. That magazine. Hmm. I don't know if the, the owners, the publishers will make it. <laughs> no samples. So somebody said newspaper. Really? Now, actually, this this will have some cartoon like, you know, sexual kind of cartoons at the back of some newspapers. And it was funny how our parents didn't even mention because you know our parents will go, our daddies especially, they'll read the important news of the day, and then they'll drop it. Then we, the children, very smart like us, we will go. And read the one that concerns us. We will not read news, though. We will not read what is happening, what federal government says. We will not read about budget. We will read sexual things. Oh, uh -huh. somebody even has a name. It says, she says, Kema Sutra newspaper. Hmm. That is, hey, I'm even seeing some newspapers I did not know about. Really? Okay, so we are learning seriously. Classmates in secondary school. Okay. So you know this this is this is going a long way. So 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 this is another one, the Simpsons cartoon, Mister Naxon cartoon. Look at even the name. This one, the name is even sounding corrupt. My dad told me about boyfriend after I had heard from friends in school. This is just it. This is just it. Again, I say and I repeat. 
you, the sex conversation is already ongoing. If you don't step up your game, it would happen without you. Your child will be sexually educated without you. You would come to the party and the doors would be shut, party over, everybody gone home. And then when you're trying to have the conversations, trying to have the education, your child looks at you as a liar, like somebody who is not woke, like, oh, somebody who needs to be taught. Do you know that these children, especially our daughters, actually can educate us? The first time I heard about hand job, he was a teenager. We we're having a conversation. I saw just going on and on. I said, hand job. I say, stop. What is hand job? Or oh, see hand job. This was some years back. I was like, tell me about it. Rewind. Don't be too fast. And she actually started explaining. I said, no, hand job. This is when you do this. When you do that, I was like, wow. So if you are late to the party, the party will happen without you. How about billboards? <laughs> Somebody say which one is Angel. That, that's how I asked. That is why when you when when you are uncomfortable with the sex conversations, you are hurting yourself. That, that's what that, that's why I, 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 I said that. I want us to know. That you cannot, please, somebody write it. I didn't say you should not or you might not. You cannot afford. You cannot afford to be uncomfortable with the sex conversations. Please write it. I need you to say it. I even wherever you are maybe at work in the market what just say it loud i let the people around you be looking at you yes tell them that it's your code that is telling you to say what you're saying i cannot be uncomfortable with the sex conversations no more because the friends the novels the books the this the that they are not i i think I can't remember where I was this week, sometime this week. And a, a guy, a young guy and a girl were talking about sexual stuff in this in the store where I was. I cringed. I was like, I don't get it. You guys are out here in the open. And they were just talking, having a conversation. Yes, they were talking to each other. But, I mean, we were hearing. So, how come we, the legitimate authority to have this conversation with our children are uncomfortable about it. If you don't normalize talking about it, you cannot teach it. You have to start with just talking about it. Then you can now go deeper to teaching. So if you cannot converse, you know, just gist about it, you can't teach it. The way I have sex conversations with teenagers usually comes in form of conversations, but I'm educating them. Yes, there is a time when we're serious, you know, everybody bring out your books and pens and all that, but I have wet the ground by, no, even if I'm taking opening prayer, closing prayer, I can, let me use the word, chuck it in. Yes. And just, find a way to sandwich it. I don't wait for the 14th of November as a sexual purity day or I wait for Children's Day on the 27th of May or I wait for Christmas or I wait for New Year. I don't have any special date. I just go ahead. So, going forward, I need you to understand that when there is any narrative, when there is any, um, maybe there's an agenda that needs to be pushed out, that needs to be shared, that needs to be passed across, 
it comes up in a conversation. When the LGBTQ community wanted to tell the world that this is what we stand for, this is what we are going to do, this is what we believe in, they started off by breaking it down into conversations. They went into cartoons, they are in the movies, they are in schools, they are talking about it. Sorry about that, please. So, these people come out there and they want to, to push the narrative. They just start talking about it. They just start talking about it. They just start talking about it. You know, they're everywhere. They're, they're, they're singing about it. They're drawing it. They're, so, they're using tools. They're using every opportunity. They're using every... Whatever everything at their disposal they are mentioning it who born you in the 80s talk about lesbian who born, where were you who was the person that delivered you sorry i have to come down to niger palace language and live who is the person that bettered you that will make you come out openly i'm a lesbian I mean, this one. Who? But when the agenda needed to be pushed, that that thing, that that myth, that you know, sacredness was broken, and they began to talk about it loudly. So when you say that, I don't know where I will start because I hear mothers a lot, girl mothers especially. I've not really started the sex conversations. I don't really know how to go about it. I, I, I don't know. You are late. You are late. Because the sex conversation is an ongoing one. It's not a one-off one. It is continuous. In the morning, the Bible says, as you stand up, as you sit, as you walk, it's an ongoing one. Just the way you talk about, you know, spiritual matters and other things, you're always advising your children. That is the same way the sex conversations will be an ongoing one. Now, why are parents generally uncomfortable about this? Because you're so uncomfortable, parents, that even when we as mentors are having the conversation, you are uncomfortable for us. Is it your conversation? Can you people leave us alone? I know how many times I have been dragged. Oh, what a team. My husband does not, is not comfortable with what you are teaching these children. What am I teaching them? Because I'm saying what you cannot say. You're uncomfortable about it. Can you hold your uncomfortability to yourself and don't bring it to me? Yeah, because, because you are uncomfortable. You now want everybody around you. You go and tell the teachers, please don't say it like that. I don't want my daughter to hear. Oh, you go and tell the... Why don't you go and tell the friends? Why don't you go tell the movies, the billboards, the newspapers, the magazines? Why don't you tell them the music videos? You can't tell those ones, but you come and tell us the, the second legitimate... the second legitimate people as far as I'm concerned, after parents, the next set that are legitimate to give your, your, your daughters the sex conversation are the mentors and coaches. And then sometimes we are like the last straw, we are like the last, <laughs> the last hope. And then you come and attack us and say, no, don't say it. I've been at an event before and some, some, a parent dragged me. Then her daughter said that in her class, I was teaching them about sex. I don't understand how. And thankfully, the organizer of the event knows me and knows my track record and said, I don't even need to ask Antetima. I already know that that is not true. She defended me before I got there. Because as a professional, we know what to say and what not to say. 
Now, why, why, why did that happen? That class I thought was 13 and 14. I usually will start with what do you know or what do you think or what have you heard or what have they told you about sex? The class went, the class went off. They were the ones. Because I usually would not like to start till I, I weigh, you know, I weigh the, the, the information level, the quotient level, sex education quotient <laughs> level. So when when you sit down and say, I have not taught my, I have not, I have not taught my my my, my children and 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 uh, as I see my comments come and talk to them, all these coaches, coach uh, this one person, all these mentors, they should know what they are teaching. You are you are shooting yourself on the leg. You should not be proud that your 13 year old is fine the sex conversation uncomfortable you should know that you have not you have not done your job over the over the holidays i can't remember what we we're talking about i think we we're even eating and then you know my second daughter just delved into the sex conversation zone me i'm always ready and she just used one phrase that sounded very dirty to me and i was like what is the meaning of this? She started laughing and said, that's how we say it. That's how they say it in school. I don't know what kind of thing. And we started using it, you know, as a point of conversation. We turned it into a joke. Even my husband, who is, who actually these things are like seriously weird to him, he had to relax because I didn't want to shut her down. By the time he say, how dare you? What is the meaning of that? Then the next time there's that kind of, slang they, they code it you know children know how to code right they will code it and talk about it within themselves and then you'll be looking but you don't know anything about it. you don't know that they have changed the world so we all had to embrace that phrase and then we used it i used it to give to to further deepen the sex conversation so my question is, why, why are parents most uncomfortable about having sex conversations? First of all, because um, they themselves were not taught about it or were not taught it. You yourself, nobody really sat down. No, your parents, for example, I mean, to be specific, your parents did not even sit you down and teach you about it. Hello, me. Hello, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining me. But when the teacher about it, so it's off, right? Another reason is we we were told or shown that talking about it was bad and it was for bad people. So I just mentioned something about bad about hand jobs, and somebody already said, "Oh, I I I I know about it. That means that means I'm really bad. That means I was really bad, though." So it's like anybody that knows about all these things is bad. So right now, somebody is saying, I'm still uncomfortable about it. I know, right? I understand. Even when I am speaking about it to people that are uncomfortable about it, I feel uncomfortable. That's the truth. When, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm speaking about it to people that I perceive as goody goody or naive, I would feel uncomfortable about it because it's going to sound like I'm bad. Do you get it? So we made it look like talking about sex and it was only for bad people because it was bad. It is wrong. I had to, I had to work on myself and say, look, this thing is important. It's not for bad people. I'm not bad. I kept myself till I got married. Clean, clean, clear, pure, straight. Same thing with my husband. So does that mean that we should now not talk about it? We should just hide it on that? No. We're going to be doing a disservice to our children. We're going to be doing a disservice to them. So uh, that's one of the reasons why parents are uncomfortable. And then, of course, there is no connection. When there is no connection, when there is no connection 
with your children, you'll be uncomfortable about it. That is why when my daughter used that word, I just continued with that tempo. I was like, what kind of word is that? It is so, we laughed about it and then we moved on. Why? There was already, you know, a basis for our sex conversations in my home. I had to work on it. it don't please, don't think I just arrived there. I actually worked on it. My husband and myself, I told my husband, I said, look, we cannot be doing we want to talk about it, we wait until left. the neighbors have slept. Then we now gather the children. So I don't know. I say we have to just talk about these things every time, anytime. No special time. While we're eating, while we're cooking, while even doing prayers. Sometimes we move from Bible that we're reading and enter the conversation. Once the atmosphere is stirred, we dive in. No need for permission. So the conversation is, is not flowing because your relationship is not flowing. There are too many hassles. Now, imagine you just finished fighting with your son or your daughter. We're talking about our girls. You just finished fighting with your daughter. Why? Then the next you're not talking about, about sex conversations. No. no. Everything about sexuality has to come from a place of warmth, a place of love, a place of Ease, peace, no stress. It, that's what sets the mood. Your daughters don't want to have the conversation because they are not used to it. I remember the first time my children were much younger when 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 I started. My little daughter was saying, "Stop, mommy, stop, gross, gross." She was like, "Gross, yeah, uh, gross." Turn, shift, hey, stop. Whoa, why are you saying these things? Why are you saying these things? By the next time, the next time they got used to it, she got used to it. They started asking questions. So I need you to understand that the earlier you start, the better. Forget about the uncomfortability that you feel. Move past it. It's a thing in the mind. It was a taboo to talk about these things on a more serious note. How? How do you how do you start talking about it? Who would you talk about it with? Everybody just look at you as bad girl, bad girl. And our parents also thought that if they talk about it with us, they are spoiling us. Please, that is one thing I need to erase from our minds. The sex conversation is not a spoiling one. It is not to spoil. It is even to prevent spoiling. Please write it down. The sex conversation is not, the, it's not for the spoiled. It's to prevent people from getting spoiled. It's not for the bad people. It's to prevent people from getting bad. You see this learning from books, learning from um, um, television, from friends. It is a risk. Because you cannot censor what is being said, what is being read, what is being written. I shared with us about how one of my girls sent a message to me. Tells, was it even on New Year Day or on the 2nd of January this year? And she was asking me, okay, it was after the sex self-confidence challenge for girls. If, you, if your daughters did not participate in that challenge, please go and catch a replay. It is something that, it's a resource that you should give your daughter to watch every month. I'm not joking. That, that challenge was an amazing one. <clears throat> Admin, please help me put up. You can get it on seller. Very important class. And that girl said to me, Akatima, I need strategies. She's one of the girls in the girls' home. I need strategies of how to break free from a particular relationship. This girl has taught me all the bad things I know. She was even the one that taught me about condom. I passed out. Why? In almost 20 years I've been mentoring teenagers, I have never taught them about condom. Somewhere in my mind, I'm like, why are you teaching them about condom? Why are you teaching them about contraceptive? Just go ahead. They're too young. If I'm going to teach about it, I'm going to talk about it with 16 and above. But guess what? 
too late. If you as a parent walked in to the session I'm having with your daughters and heard me talking about condom, you drag me. I tell Tima, oh, my daughter is going to go and Google now. She's going to go and check. Okay, well, sorry. Her friend has told her already. <laughs> and you don't even know. You don't know. You don't know. And then you now want me to, to, to wait. You are waiting. Me are wait. Then, then what happens? This wrong narratives are spreading like wildfire why please let us begin to work on ourselves ayoba esther says my girls can ask me any questions about sex recently she told me she bumped on some girls in church watching porn she she was free to tell me because i was the one who told her about porn thank you that is one thing we need to know. If you don't set the pace, they will not come back to you. Because they will, it would look like, oh, let me not come and be the one that will spoil mommy. Yes, these teenagers, these girls actually think that way. Like, no, 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 let's not spoil our mother. She's so spiritual. She's so holy. Ah, we can't. Let's live out of it. With the bad ones you see why i say and i'll keep saying that when you make sex and the sex conversations look like it's only for the bad for the spoiled your children will not bring it to you because who wants to talk about something bad something rotten with their parents nobody everybody wants to you know keep good conversations for the good <laughs> they keep bad conversations for the bad you know that's how we're hearing of church body church body when we when we 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 we, we cover our mouths we don't want people to hear about these things let's not talk about it this is church let's not talk about it just cover your mouth why you you are bad this auntie she's spoiled she's bad thank god that my records are clean to the glory of god god by himself kept me for this assignment if not i'm sure the dragging would have been much more than i can ever think ask or imagine because people will feel like, oh, because she was bad before, now she wants to come and spoil our children. I was not bad before. Sorry, ma. I have not slept with, not slept with any human being except my spouse. Sorry about that. Um, okay, please, if you can hear me, let me know. Let me know if you can hear me. Frozen. Oh, okay. Better, better back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. So what, what, what do we do? What do we do? We have talked about... <laughs> Why we are do why we were doing what we were doing? Let's talk about what we can do now. And I'm talking especially to you who still feels, you know, a bit, a bit uncomfortable about it. Number one, begin with building your relationship with your daughters. Yes, invest in it. Thank you so much. 
Invest, as I, as I mentioned, please write. Invest in the relationship with your daughter. Spend time talking, talking about everything, talking about anything. Let there be no restrictions. Just talk, 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 talk. Build that thing. And the talking I'm talking about, I'm not talking about um, threatening, um, advising, every time, lecturing. No, no, no. That is why you are supposed to. That sometimes let it be just many times. Talk about deep stuff. Even if your child is just six, even if your daughter is just six. So build that relationship. And no relationship is built without time. You see that time created for your daughters. You're tired, I know. Spend time. Find activities that you can do together. Those of you that are in the inner circle, some of you are, are some of you feel like, oh, it's so stressful. Oh, they, they want to kill us. What is all this? The assignments are too many. This, 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 this is happening, etc. You don't know. You don't know that 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 you are creating the platform, building a solid platform for the sex conversation. Because the sex conversation is not going to thrive on nothing. It's going to thrive on something on a solid foundation. And you know, the Bible says that if the uh, foundation is destroyed, what would the righteous do? You can't do anything without a solid relationship, a close relationship with your daughters. <laughs> the big business fixer. Thank you so much. Now, let me, let me explain something. Girls are emotional people. Girls are loving, loving, loving doovies. No matter how hard your girl is behaving, if you use love, you break her. A mother sent me a message over the weekend. My daughter is rude. My my daughter, my daughter, she doesn't greet me. She doesn't ask me as if she's fighting with me. She's doing it. Love will break her. That's why God did not bother telling a woman to love a man because he knows that whether he tells us or not, we will love. And then your child interprets love as the time you spend with her talking, not just shouting. So it's not just time spent, but time well spent. Time lovingly spent. You're going out with your daughter, you are whining all the way. There was a time I whined every Sunday morning on our way to church. I had to, I had to, you know, call my children. I'm like, I, I don't like it. We're supposed to be having conversations on the car, but you have made me so upset in the morning. And my daughter said, Mom, you are the one that's getting yourself upset. Ah. So it's now my fault again. But that's it. I had to go back and start to work on it. And intentionally decide that the time I am spending with my daughters, with my children from the house to church is well spent. So it's not just time. But time well and lovingly spent. You have teenagers, fight, 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 talk, where all the you are cooking, do the same thing. You are watching movies. What is it? The day the sex conversation is gonna come, it's gonna come like a lecture, like a warning. And then the man they're like, oh, what you were doing, you did not know now it's our turn. You're coming to come and be lecturing us, one long lecture and feeling sleepy. That's going to be the attitude. You don't know, girls. If a girl does not connect with you, she cannot listen to you. That is why if you check marriages, when a woman is not submitting, she has lost connection with her husband. Maybe the man is cheating on her or something is just going wrong. There's some issue around. So she would, she would not listen. I was going to talk once, she would talk then. I was going to say, don't go, she would go. I was going to say, come, she would go. Uh -uh. Check it. If your daughters are not connected to you, you cannot have the sex conversations with them. So go back. And trust me, one major skill you need to build a relationship with your daughter is patience. And the second one is wisdom. Because if you follow your daughters, daughters, they could be very annoying. I have to. I know what I'm saying. Daughters, they are the sweetest people ever, but also the most annoying. They are like sweet and sour. One minute they are making, I dropped my daughter off in school 
I said, oh, I'm going to miss our fight. She said, don't worry, I'll soon be back. We'll continue fighting. I'm like, seriously? You fight this minute, the next minute you are loving again, the next... Your relationship must be vibrant. If not, you cannot have that conversation with them. Number two, do some mind work. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do some mind work on yourself. I did. I had to. Tell yourself that the sex conversation is like any other conversation. The same way you talk about entertainment, music, spiritual matters, academics. That's the same way the sex conversation will be. The same. Nothing different. Let's stop making it look so special, you know, so, so different. And yes, I want to stop at this point and say thank you to everybody who, who is sharing this link. I can see we have people joining from their offices. People are joining from their business places. Thank you so much. God bless you. We have one major goal, all of us together. We want our daughters to be sexually intelligent. So we must have these conversations. If you're watching a replay, thank you. Please share. Share, 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 because you are not sharing LGBTQ is sharing. You are not sharing the musicians, the stars, they are sharing. Their posts, their music videos, everything is hitting millions. That's that they're sexually educating your daughters. So please let's create the right narrative by sharing this information on your status everywhere. Just share. Okay, so do that mind work. Let your daughters not think that there is something so special about the sex conversation. There is nothing. It's as important as their spiritual life, as their mental health, as their, as their academics. You know, some of us, we're so serious when it comes to academics. We're so serious when it comes to their, spirit, their spirituality. We're so serious when it comes to their health. And when it comes to sex conversations, you are missing in action. M-I-A, please write in the comment. I will no longer be an A. I will no longer be M-I-A. No longer. I will no longer be missing in action when it comes to the sex conversation. No more. I'm going to be right in the middle of it. Do you know I have gone into the sex conversation so much with both my biological and non-biological children that when they're talking about sexual things and I come in, they continue. Yes. Like, hey, I wanted to tell you, they just flow. They don't stop and start again or change. They just, I just glide into it. I am, I try to always be inside it in the middle of it. Whether the words are dirty, sometimes I must confess inside my mind. I'm like, what is this? I don't like anything vulgar. That's why I don't do secular music of any sort. <laughs> I don't. Yesterday I was I was somewhere with my daughter. We we're just passing, and one song was playing. The bump of the bump. I just said, "What is all this?" She started giggling. I'm like, "Can't we just move in peace? Must we hear bump bump and all these things all around the place?" But because of the position and the role I'm playing, I have to bear it. Please stop being missing in action. Number three. Get content readily available. Get content readily available. It is not when the conversation starts. Then you now start saying, eh, eh, what are they? You will be uncomfortable. Or when your daughter just asks you, Mommy, what is the threesome? You say, um, 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 actually, actually, you'll be touching your hair. What is wrong with this girl? You are spoiled. Where did you hear it from? Is that the answer to our question? What is threesome? Somebody is saying I did not know about hand job, and your daughter now comes, hears it in class, and says, "Mommy, hey, what, what you talking about that day? What is hand job?" You now start stammering. If you have younger children, in fact, get get for all ages. Get your your content ready. This is why, if you're here, you don't have maintain your wife. Hey, I cannot help you because this book is actually a conversation starter. One of the reviewers of the book said, 
said it as a parent coach, when this coach, I see sex conversation as a challenge for parents. This, therefore, is your conversation starter. If you don't know where or how to start, start with maintain your work. You will see so many things you can just, you know, so many things you can just pick and and expand. So many things that you can pick and expand come from materials like this. This is another one. Puberty, the book on puberty for preteens. This is another one. Good body habits and boundaries. So tell me why you will be uncomfortable. Why? Why will you be uncomfortable when you have somebody else that has broken the eyes for you? Be content ready. Don't just go to the conversation. He says, 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 what is it? He says, we talk about sex. So let's start. Says, this says, this is says, matter. Hmm, very bad. This just, you are not saying anything. The daughter is going to be rolling her eyes like, what's wrong with my mother? What did they tell her today? Have always have bullet points, always have a plan. We want to talk about contraceptives for older children. Or we want to talk about um, dating. We want to talk about, you know, um, side chick. It's a conversation starter. Or a, a sex conversation. Yes, it's not a starter. It's a sex conversation. You want to talk about drugs. You want to talk about porn. You want to talk about, you know, esteem, clothes, nudity. All those things are all sex conversations. Don't separate it. That's my number four point. Number four. No, let me finish with this. Whether you're making it directly or indirectly, whether you're having a conversation formally or informally, you need the both. You must always have a major point. I want to talk about pregnancy today. Oh, today I want to talk about um, social media. I want to talk about whatever. Music. Let's talk about music videos. Let's talk about dancing. Do you know that dancing is a is a sex conversation? Do you know? Do you know that dancing is, is, is because twerking and sexual sexual songs and steps is part of the sex conversations. Do not. Take it out. When you're having a conversation, put it as a bullet point. You talk about speaking vulgarly. It is part of it. So always go to the table for sex conversations with content. With content. Okay, somebody is asking which of the books for a five-year-old and a teenager. So what will happen is you need the book, not the five-year-old. You need the book. When you read the book, you would now break it down for your five-year-old to understand. You see that many of us came here and said, oh, no, I, I just, you know, I just stumbled on this book, this magazine, and I just knew about it. Giving your children books without checking them is a risk. Because in it, you don't know what they, how they have put it. There was a book that we sold at Witty Mind. By the way, Witty Mind is our bookstore and should be your family plug for books. So we ordered these books um, from a Christian bookstore, one of our suppliers. We ordered it from one of our Christian suppliers for books. And, you know, I, I went through it and I saw that they defined sex as intercourse between a man who loves a woman. Ah, I didn't see marriage. I cancelled it. I you brought my pen. Sam, I brought I, about two or three things in that book. Because of us, they stopped bringing in those books into Nigeria. I had to give the feedback. I said, this book is subtly going against what is appropriate. Going against what is appropriate. So I had to Use my black pen. Tell I am the one that did it. I said this is wrong. It's not between people who love it, between two people who are married legally. That's what sex is. Please, nobody should come and be telling us what is wrong. 
and then the book was for children. You see what I'm saying? You can't just hand over anything to your children. Yes, yeah, so people write for for children. I think at Witty Minds, we have this um my body and now my body boundary, something. We have a book like that. Once you come to the store, that's the first thing the front desk will ask you. The age of your children, the gender of your children. Because we don't want to give you something that is not is not uh, appropriate. This is why you cannot just go off without a mentor, without a coach. That brings me to number four point. If you want to stop being uncomfortable about the sex conversations, get a mentor for your daughter. Get her to attend classes. It's going to break the ice. Well, that's why my girls come to me. They don't say, Auntie Tima, what I want to tell you. I mean, they, they don't prep me. They just hit it straight. Auntie Tima, one boy is to, to touching me. He's asking me to upset. They just straight. So you need a mentor. Those of you that feel like, oh, uh, I'll be fine. We'll be managing ourselves. You don't know that the mentor was, was, was created to help you on this journey. The mentor will help you on so many fronts. Stop saying, I don't like my child attending all these classes. I don't know what they will teach them. I cannot guarantee what they will teach them. As long as that mentor and that coach is verified, PG at Etima, I am, I, I am verified. Verified sex ed educator. Sex ed coach. Sex ed, whatever you want to call it. I am verified. I am blue tick. You can trust me. You can count on me to give your daughter information and education that is appropriate if you don't think it's appropriate i know it is appropriate because i am on the field and everything i give to her trust me on it trust me you might be uncomfortable about it but i know that it is key for her at that stage of her life this is why you cannot not be at the your daughter at the sex ed class. We're having a class only for girls. If the boys want to come in from the back end, it's their business. But we're going to be focusing on our girls, on our girls, on our girls. 10 below, 13 above. We're going to break them into two classes. If your children, like we did in sex in the self, confidence challenge if your children are younger than 10 you would have to watch that class and then get the tools to break down the sex conversations with them please do not come to that class with the attitude of let me come and see what they're teaching them i'm going to warn them all, all these coaches they should know what they're teaching my daughter don't come to that class with that attitude. Don't come with it because when a 10 year old was sharing with, uh, with her friend about condom, you went, we were not there, both you and me. So these children are going at a very fast rate. We need to up our game. You can trust me to give you myself and other mentors that are also verified to have these conversations. Not everybody is. Sometimes, I, I won't blame parents. I know that there could be some, you know, not unmindful way of doing this because we have said, teach the children these things. You, some, some, some people don't know how to, they are not skilled at it. But you can trust me. Like I said, I'm verified on this. So get your daughters. There is a link to register. Admin is going to be putting it up now. Don't pay into any account. Please just click that link, make your registration, and you'll find yourself in the group waiting and ready for the class taking place on the 17th and on the 18th of February. Okay, so let's get set. Let's get set. Girls Hub, your registration is special. <laughs> so please, you get it on your group. Now, what's the last thing that we must do if we, uh, or that we should do if we don't want to continue being uncomfortable about the sex conversation? Make it often. Make it often, make it informal, other times make it formal. Just ensure that you're being intentional. 
ensure that you're treating the sex conversation with all amount of seriousness. It deserves it. Your girls deserve the right information from you. You, like I said at the beginning, you are the first legal person authorized to give your daughters the sex conversation. So stop being uncomfortable. Write it, say it, go to the, go to the, um, what's it called? Go to the mirror. Call it sex, 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 sex. sex. After some time, your man starts getting both sex, 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 sex. Then it becomes clear. Go and be like someone that is learning speech, <laughs> that is learning how to talk for the first time. <laughs> so go there, go and learn so that it becomes easier for you. So number five is make the sex conversation often. Make it often. Don't wait for a special time and a special place before you have the sex conversation. Have it informally. Have it anywhere, <laughs> like my coach would say. When you're driving, when you're eating, when you're cooking, washing, praying, have it anywhere. If you're still feeling uncomfortable about it, go back again into your room. Call it, 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 then you come out and not. <clears throat> Initially, it's going to be very uncomfortable, but trust me, after some time, you get used to it. And truly, your daughters will know that mommy has, mommy has upped her game. Don't even gossip about you. Let me see what is happening these days. The new mom is always talking about this thing. How far? What happened? It's okay. As long as you are hitting your target. And your target, by the way, is to ensure that your daughters are properly informed about sex and sexuality. That's your goal. Write it in the comment. My goal is to ensure that my daughters are adequately and age appropriately informed and educated about sex and sexuality not misinformed not uneducated or diseducated or miseducated properly educated sexually intelligent that is what the sex conversation is about it's about making them sexually intelligent when it comes to sexuality they are using their, their their brain you know girls they like to say that girls have fish brain because they don't think that's how boys they have girls that's how they tease girls that's how they poke girls see people that don't use people that have fish brain you cannot even think let's change the narrative let's stop it let's stop it let's let's go there and make it you know easier for these girls so that they are making better choices Thank you so much. And please, um, let me let me say here, if you're a parent and you live in Port Harcourt, you live in the south-south zone of Nigeria, um, Cross River, Akwaibom, Bayelsa, Imo, Anambra, Abia, we are coming to your zone for Igniting Bootcamp. Whoop, whoop. Officially, the Igniting Bootcamp registration begins today. You can start making deposits, you know, and um, start making plans to bring your daughters and your sons. Igniting Boot Camp is for both girls and boys. We have three camps every year. Port Harcourt, Lagos, and Abuja is last. Please do not miss it. Delta, please come, 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 come to Port Harcourt. Delta, Delta, come to Port Harcourt. Um, as uh, um, um, Edo come to Portaco. So south, south, southeast, this is your camp. You miss it, you come to Abuja and spend time and spend money. Abuja is the last week in August. Lagos is the first week in August, like the 6th to the 10th, that's Lagos. Abuja is, I think, 26th to 31st in August, but Port Harcourt, 
is second to sixth April. Is that I just saw it in the flyer? Um, so make sure that you're doing your registration. Make sure you're doing your registration. Make sure you're doing your second to sixth April. Make your registrations start immediately. And of course, let's get going with the sex ed class for Gen Zs. Let's go, let's go, let's go. That class is for just 7,500. If you are late, you will pay 10,000 Naira. This year is a new year. We're not doing late anything again. If you're late, you pay for inconvenience and pay for all the hassle. Please don't pay into any account. Just use the link. Just use the link. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Yes, and um, don't forget, I've authored other books. I have the Spiritual Intelligent Teenager. I have the my, my series for children. A Child's Guide to Good Attitude, A Child's Guide to Growing Responsibly, A Child's Guide to Managing Your Emotions, A Child's Guide to Spiritual Intelligence. Yes, the team has put it up for you to see. Those are my books. And you can order them from Witty Minds Family Bookstore. It's a sex ed class for girls or parents. For girls, please. Coach Wendy holds a sex educate class for parents in july i usually speak at that training every year it comes up every july every july so you would see that you see that this is for girls girls only girls only thank you for that um question okay so don't forget maintain your white is your go-to book for this season um the purity poverty book and of course the book on bodies and boundaries for ages seven and above thank you so much everybody please continue to share like comment and trust us with your daughters if you're not already in the girls hub we love you but we're going to see you next year okay we're going to see you next year. The, the, the registration, the gates are already closed, officially and unofficially. Please don't come to the back door. If you pay into our account, we'll just convert it for 2025 girls, so which is fine. I mean, which is still fine. Okay, but for now, registration for the girls' hope is officially and unofficially closed. Thank you so much for making it in this year. We appreciate you. If you're not in the girls' hope already, don't worry. We have trainings, okay? We have events. We have, I mean, lots and loads of activities that your daughter can participate in this year. So relax and enjoy the ride. Start with the sex ed class. If you're in Port Harcourt, get ready to come. And by the way, if you're not in Port Harcourt, we still have the online boot camp, online Easter camp in April. So I'm looking forward to seeing your daughters there. We have an annual Easter camp online every year. We used to be offline, but now we're moving online. <laughs> so prepare for that. So that's also an opportunity for your daughter to come into our system. I love you all so much, but I love your daughters more, like I said to them in the girls' hope. And um, I hope that you all are going to make me um, very happy with you by going out there and having the sex conversations comfortably please that's the last assignment for today write in the comment i'm going to have the sex conversations in the most comfortable manner ever i'm going to be comfortable about it thank you so much mother of billionaires thank you thank you i'm more blessed to have you here god bless you yes i'm going to have it without any uncomfortability goodbye to discomfort goodbye to feeling uncomfortable Goodbye to gross. I feel gross. I feel weird. <laughs> End it right now. This fraction of a minute. Have that conversation pleasantly, intentionally, and most of all, comfortably. I celebrate you all, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on my platforms every now and then. And of course, next week, same time, same place. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. And please don't forget to share. 
Bye.